Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta build, we're combining two underrated exotics to create a true to his name tank build. Not many people use Icefall Mantle, let alone Verglass Curve in the current state of the game. So with that reason alone, I want to show you what the two combined can offer to players. It's pretty simple, but easy to use and provides players a key way to make crystals fairly available with every step they make. Of course, it's not going to make you invincible, but it is going to pack a punch while keeping you safe. So to start, we'll be using a Tetonian Harvest which creates stasis shards from glaciers or frozen combatants that get destroyed. Then we have Diamond Lance which will allow me to throw an Ice Lance at targets, which can freeze them on impact. Similar to my Diamond Lance build we did a while back, I believe that implementing the same idea into this build will provide an extra leeway with how we deal with enemies of all types. Since our abilities will be high via crystals created, it makes sense to add the following two aspects together. Although aspect area for the titans do offer some good alternatives that don't sway too far away from the core of the build, so there is flexibility if you don't like what's being shown. For fragments we then have whispers of shards which will boost our grenade regen rate for a short period. Whispers of chain where while standing near frozen targets or crystals you take reduced damage. Whispers of fissures which will increase the size and damage of our shard stasis effect. Whisper of venting where primary ammo weapons get a 43% damage buff. And then a whisper of conduction which allows stasis shards to attract to you. The key mods to have here are fissures, chain and conduction with how often our crystals are created. Maximizing our defense will allow us to tank more shots than normal and legendary content and then turn our crystals into landmines will easily separate the area from being overwhelmed by force. With how often crystals are created, you can in fact swap your grenades to other versions instead and still retain the overall strength of the build, which may be ideal if you're not good with using glacial grenades at all, or if you generally lack the key mod to support a high cooldown grenade type like such available. For mods and stats, having a tier 10 resilience, discipline and strength is going to be recommended for supporting the three key areas we'll be using. Don't worry about needing to reach tier 10 via the armor stats alone as we will be using front mods to help support these areas easily. For resilience case, we have ours at tier 10 and we aren't using any front mods to support this area. This is because it's quite easy to build into a high resilience via selected armor and fragment experience effects. At tier 10, we will have a 22 second cooldown rate with 30% damage reduction in PvE, which is going to be combined into Ice Van Mantle's effect once active. We also have the bolstering detonation mod that will grant us 20% class ability boost when we hit an enemy with our grenades. With this and the crystal applied, you should be able to survive a GM level sniper hit with a seal of health, although this is not recommended because of the slowness of the build, and generally it's not recommended to use this in such an environment. The discipline is the same with ours at tier 7 and with frontal focus added, it's going to allow us to reach tier 10 very easily once we get our armor charges going. Our cooldown will be a minute 16 when using glacial grenades, but with whispers of shards on top of the cooldown rate, it will negate the high cost grenades provide while also allow us to make full use of them the best way we can think of. I also added the bomber mod just to further support the area with a 10% boost, although this is not also required. This is going to be the same for our strength stat at tier 7 as well, with Pont of Vigor also pushing the stat to tier 10. At this level, we will have a 57 second cooldown for using our shiver strike as much as possible, although this does get reduced further when using stasis shards are added to the mix. This has been useful in a number of ways such as allowing me to use our melee to inflict slow, but most of the time we'll be using it to escape bad situations when we can't deactivate our ice fall quick enough. For the armor charges, we have charged up which will provide a plus one to how many charges we can carry. This paired with harmonic siphon, elemental charge and powerful attraction allows us to retain a high precision of orbs of power on hand when we are using our abilities, weapons and class ability. This of course then leans into the surge we are using which is times one status weapon surge mod for the 7% damage buff and then having the recuperation mod for quick health regen when needed. Add on time dilation for increased self buff duration and all time based effects will be greatly increased. If you plan to use your heavy a lot, then don't forget to add on your heavy ammo finder and times 2 harmonic reserves mods if you intend to use stasis rockets or stasis machine guns a lot. For the weapons, we have the Virgil's Curve Exotic Bow, which allows players to create stasis crystals after defeating enemies, which is key to making the build fully viable. The Exotic works well when combined into a fully stasis setup, as you can make use of the fragments to enhance the crystals you create. 
In many ways, the weapon feels more like a support weapon with how well and protected the exotic effects kick in. And this is kind of how I view the weapon as a whole in terms of his role. Combining this with Icefall Mantle as fragments that provide damage reduction, area shield, and ability regen allows users to be more free when selecting what aspects and grenade choice you desire. With the right setup, like shown, this weapon fully enhanced stasis effects time 10 without the user needing to have key mods present, which does show. For Heavy, we have Quilliam's Terminus Machine Gun with dynamic sway reduction and killing tally. This is a great heavy to own if you have ever done the King's Rule raid, as the following is not only hard hitting and great against majors to mini bosses in end game, but also because you can increase the weapon's magazine size just from its origin trait. Now the version I have is more of a minor to mini bosses threat and not so much against big bosses, however that does not mean it can't be used against bosses. With its origin trait, I can double my magazine size after getting some kills with killing tallying and then use all that against the boss itself which is beneficial for one large burst of damage. With the right perk combo, you can get this weapon to have around 100 plus in its base magazine with certain perk setups, but this does require users to have enhanced key perks, which is something that's quite time consuming, but if you go with what I currently have, that should be good enough. With Season 2 just around the corner, I can see stasis focused seasonal mods making their appearance and hopefully pushing players to give stasis more or less a try. If that's not the case, then that's not a big problem, as this build is designed for off meta activities, with how both good and bad the setup is. Firstly, the good. The build offers a vastly increased walking stasis tank that will always have damage reduction and overshield wherever they go. From Icefall Mantle, giving us the quick overshield on demand, shards we create and collect reinforcing our overshield when needed, and the glacier crystals also giving us a damage reduction while near them, you can take a full on blow from a lethal hit from a legendary boss and survive it with at least a silver of health. The idea here is to abuse the damage reduction by using Virgil's exotic effect to constantly create crystal where we stand, and then keep using those crystals to soak up as much damage incoming. In case the crystals do get destroyed, they will grant us shards that will not only regenerate part of our lost overshield that we lose, but also grant us key ability regen from fragments down to the mods we use. Lastly, if you really want to play it safe, then having a secondary weapon like Nessa Oblation with destabilizing rounds and repulsive brace will give us a quick and on demand overshield for literally a single kill. The sort of combo is simple to use, and they both interact very well with their effects, to the point of being a huge recommendation to those who like a bit of synergy within their builds. However, with how tanky the build is, it's also slow and cumbersome, which goes against how effective it can be in higher level content. Although you can deactivate Icefall when needed, you will have a delay to when you can activate again, which means you have to rely on other means until then. Luckily, our abilities being used provide key survivor items that you'll soon rely on. But even outside of that, the amount of damage this build can sustain is not strong enough to be used in something like GMs or Master Raids. At Legend and Below, the build can do pretty well and can survive lever hits like mentioned before. But the moment you go into Master and above, that's where the build will fall apart, and sadly the only way to make it more viable and mass than above is to play with a mountain mix, which is limited to a few items. This doesn't mean the build is useless though. I use this in Legend content completely fine, and with how strong Stasis already is, this is something I would recommend a new player to use if they ever want to try Legend Lost Sectors for the first time. I recommend this only because the given activity is both short and can also be relatively hard to do but not impossible to complete, so using such a build will grant you an easy way to navigate said content at your own pace. Overall, the build delivers on making two uncommon exotics common in design and overall feel the offer to the players. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, but at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.